everyone, welcome back to Thrash Newsroom. I'm your host, Orthin Dresden, and today we're going to be looking at all the wrestling news from Thursday. We start with why Ronda Rousey did not appear on this week's edition of WWE Raw. It's because she actually had to fly back to Columbia to resume filming the Mile 22 film. She's scheduled to be filming until mid-February, so she won't likely be appearing on WWE television until the filming is wrapped up. That makes complete sense. I'm still mm, with how they debuted her. It was good on the one hand because it made mainstream buzz and it made her look bit a big deal and then the other hand you've got women getting overshadowed Ugh, i'm not going to get into this debate right now me and super chastney may get into this debate in a podcast stay tuned um but yeah i think when she makes an actual tv debut she'll make a bang when she actually makes it. i cannot wait to see uh, and then we go to a recent interview in hannibal tv miss hattie a former wwf ecw and wcw women's wrestler was critical of Paige's recent actions, she said the following. Overall, I think she had an opportunity to do something and have a really, really great run. I think she spoiled it. I think it's sad because she could have had a really great run and made lots of money and probably never have to work again. I heard WWE didn't want her to have neck surgery, but she pressed for neck surgery and they're like, you're too young to have neck surgery. Um, it, it, This one's in debate, because if she didn't have the neck surgery, would she have had this injury now and put her on the shelf? There is a lot of factors that go into this current page uh, injury and angle, uh, problem and everything like that. So I can see where Miss Hattie is coming from. Please tell me I'm saying her name right. Uh, I can see her point. I don't know if this is completely Paige's fault. It's way too early to tell if it would have made a difference. Uh, but I do love seeing people's different opinions. I think it's not completely Paige's fault. But um, we just have to see where time goes. Hopefully Paige can re recover and get back in the ring. Then we go to the heat on Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Uh, even though Brock Lesnar hit Strowman with a stiff punch at the Royal Rumble, there is reportedly no heat between the two. If there was, Lesnar wouldn't be working with Strowman in the first place. Lesnar has been influenced in the... Uh, in regarding to the guys that he worked with. Lesnar's punch was merely considered to be a receipt to the stiff knee that Strowman gave him, and Lesnar told him to slow the fuck down after hitting the punch. I love that. Just, wow, slow the fuck down. I love that. He's like, dude, calm down. Dude. I don't know. That, that, yeah, I'm glad there's no heat. I love Strowman. He's so great. Uh, and then we go to uh, Dave Meltzer giving us an update on Jason Jordan. He said he's actually suffering with a neck injury, not a back injury, as repeatedly reported. He notes that Jordan is having issues with his grip, and that's usually very serious. Jordan was not part of Raw, and according to Mike Johnson of PW Insider, Jordan won't be booked to do any matches or physical angles until further notice. He was originally planned to be in the men's elimination chamber, but the injury could prevent him from being part of the match. I'm glad they're pulling him off until we can figure out what's going on with him. I mean... As much as we hate you, Jason, I don't think any of us really want to see your career um, be postponed for a very long time or you possibly having to retire. You never want to see a young up-and-coming wrestler, male or female, having this this problem of, oh, I could be losing my career just as it starts. It's a horrible situation. I do hope Jordan does recover. Uh, and then we have what I, the massive story. Uh, the Andrea Cian Almas versus Johnny Gargano match from NXT TakeOver Philadelphia received five stars from Dave Meltzer. Oh yes, it has happened guys. 2018, we finally have a Dave Meltzer five star match. Uh, this is his first five star match for WWE since John Cena versus CM Punk in 2011 in the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Damn. That is... Congratulations to the two guys involved. The match was incredible. So I can see why Dave gave it five stars. I mean, there's some others I could think of that should have got five stars. But I'm obviously not Dave Meltzer. He probably has a strict criteria of what he would vote. I mean, I probably would have given Velveteen Dream versus Johnny Gargano. Probably very close to a five star at NXT. And Adam Cole and also Black was pretty damn good as well. Uh, and then he gave the Royal Rumble 2018 pay-per-view, the highest rating he gave was four and a quarter stars, and that was for the men's Royal Rumble match. Uh, in comparison, the 1992 Royal Rumble match, generally considered to be the WWE's best Royal Rumble match, received three and a three-quarter stars. 
So we, we, this is the kind of level we're talking about and how good that, that Men's Royal Rumble was. I mean, I, I personally think it should have got four and a half stars, but... Uh, yeah, I, I, thank God it's finally happened. <laughs> thank you, Dave. You've made my life now, dude. Uh, and then we go to the raw viewership has dropped. It went. It's now done 3.4 million viewers this week compared to the 3.4.5 uh, last week. Then again, it was raw 25th anniversary. I didn't expect them to keep the just over a million new viewers. I mean. That would have been pretty damn impressive. But yeah, 3.4 is a decent amount of TV viewer. Uh, and then we go to Seth Rollins uh, talking about the curb swamp being allowed to be used again. He said, I am pretty excited to reconnect with an old friend. It's been three years since I've been able to perform the move. Obviously, it got a nice reaction from the crowd and from the online audience as well. It was very exciting to bring it back. And hopefully moving forward, it'll be a nice piece to add to my arsenal. Yes, please. I love the curb stomp. It is by far... Oh, Seth Rollins' his best finisher he's ever had. I did not like the knee. I did not like the pedigree. Uh, then we go to um, a bit more on Jeremy Borash. Uh, according to Peter Inside, it was Triple H's decision to hire Jeremy Borash. Uh, while it's possible that he could be involved in the Woken Matt Hardy storyline, uh, Borash was hired to work with um, NXT for now. His move to WWE could affect Impact Wrestling's future plans as the company was looking to transition Josh Matthews out of his announcing role for another position. So we'll have to see where that goes with Impact, but I'm glad Jeremy Boris is here. Whatever role you put the guy in, he will do well at. The guy is an amazing on-air personality. He is by far what made Impact Impact, so they've lost that little bit of impactness of him. Maybe moving forward, that's a good thing for Impact, so they can have a pretty much clean slate with the recognisable of the old brand gone so people can start focusing on the new brand maybe it's a bad thing and it's just going to crumble without Borash, we'll have to see where we go, and the Mick Foley was critical of the dive that Sasha Banks did on this week's Raw, he said I really don't want to see Sasha Banks try that dive again, too many close calls time to take that item off the menu uh, and then someone named Claire responded Sasha should listen to Rumi Foley and stop doing the suicide dive, too many close calls she literally died and la died and landed on her head. I agree with Mick Foley. That is a dangerous move when Sasha's performing it. It's not always a dangerous move, but the way she performed it was very dangerous and very potentially life-threatening if she hit she landed wrong on that. So yeah, please drop that, Sasha. Uh, and then we go to. More numbers. Uh, the live viewership for Mixed Match Challenge was down again to 62,000 viewers. It's down from last week's 91,000 and the weeks before 135,000. Damn. I'm going to need to do something to get these numbers back up, guys. Maybe put it on the rest of the goddamn world. That might help. Uh, and then, according to PW Insider, um, Epico has had shoulder surgery... Um, on the 30th of January in Birmingham, Alabama. This, uh, this time it is unknown whether and how long Epico will be out of action for. So best of luck on your recovery, Epico. I do hope you recover very, very soon, dude. Uh, then we go to um, Impact um, reaction to the major de um, um, departures. Um, Ed Horner... Norholm said, we wish him all the best about Jeremy Borash. We wish him all the best. He's a talented guy and has been with the company forever. But we have a lot of talented guys. Change is good and gives the other guys a chance to step up. Well, that, that's a very good way to spin a negative um, situation into a positive. Saying, well, he was amazing, but we do have more talent that we could train up and make make good use of. I like that. And then that Lashley's Lashley's feet to figure out what he wants to do next. Whether it's wrestling or mixed martial arts. We wish him all the best. He's a great talent. It's foolish to say, no, we won't want to retain him. But he has his own ambitions about what he thinks is good for him next in his career. Uh, and then Scott to more comment on EC3. He said, his contract wasn't up. He came to us and we had a frank discussion about where he saw himself going. We decided to sit down and work out something that worked out for us. on how we would wrap up his, this portion of his career. Well, from reading all these, it sounds like Impact's getting going into this new move very maturely. And hopefully this will work for them. 
hopefully we can start thinking of it as its own unique company now instead of the old one that was decent. Uh, and then we go to, uh, according to Robbie Fox of Barstool Sports, which is a verified Twitter account, WrestleMania is going to be held in the MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. It's apparently considered a done deal at this point. It re previously held WrestleMania 29. So that's pretty cool. Back to there. Oh, that'd be nice. It was a pretty decent arena last year time. So let's do this. And then Glenn Jacobs announced on Facebook that uh, him and The Undertaker will be doing a, uh, like a convention and conference call March 1st in Knoxville. Be, that's really awesome to see that The Undertaker and Kane are going to be uh, meeting up outside of WWE. Uh, and then the rumoured name for the men's elimination chamber is um, Roman Reigns, who I thought qualified but apparently was Braun Strowman. Who knew? Um, Seth Rollins, and obviously I've mentioned Jason Jordan, but we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, obviously, Reigns will win. This is clearly obvious that Reigns is going to win this chamber. If he doesn't, I'll be very happy. But let's go for it. And then, in an interview with 6 ABC Action News, Mark Henry discussed his current role with WWE. For the most part, my whole deal right now is trying to bring more awareness to WWE, its charities, and its programs, travel the world, and introduce our business to the people that don't have the WWE. Our developmental franchise, NXT... I scout. There's guys in the company now, Braun Strowman, Brown Cobb, and Apollo Crews that I've helped cultivate. You know, and say, hey, this guy can do something. Bring him in. I like that. He's basically just going out on WWE's behalf and saying, this is what our product is. What do you think of it? How about you? We work together. I like how Mark Henry's doing that. That's cool. Uh, and then um, Las Vegas has local advertising for uh, the Illuminated Shaber, and they've listed the wi women. Chamber participants as Nia Jax, Bailey, Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, Tony Deville, and Mandy Rose. Apart from Mandy Rose, that's not a bad list. We'll have to see where they go with it, but I hope they um, do this Women's well Chamber really well. Uh, then we go to a bit of drama news. Uh, Grimm's Toy Show. Um, let me just play the video. Smart. Six, five, four, three. Yeah. I literally farted as it came down to one. Okay, you get you get the idea of the kind of things that he was saying. Um, and then Naya responded with this saying, I'm guessing he wants attention for his horrible behaviour, making fun of my weight, which is completely unoriginal. But I, what gets me is he's shouting derogative things towards women in front of a young girl. Good job, buddy. He responded saying, I'm so sorry, Nia Jax. I feel like a total piece of crap now. I hope you will accept my apology. I will remove the video. I'm a huge fan of all involved in the women's and men's rumble. Sometimes I get carried away trying to be shocking. Uh, and then he said a tweet about um, people telling him to kill himself, which is never a good response, never the correct response. You lose your argument immediately when you tell someone to go f kill themselves or start violence or threats. You kill your argument there. Uh, and then he said, I messed up this time, guys. I'm sorry. I worked very hard to be better. I sent a po my, an apology to Dia Jax and I removed the video. She responded saying... Um, Thanks, thank you for that, buddy. No hard feelings at all. This is lovely to see somebody doing something, realizing how wrong they are, apologizing, and fixing the problem. It's so refreshing to finally see someone actually go. Well, I know she called him out, but she's like, he's like, oh god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shit. This, this is why it happened. I mean, I'm sorry. And then he removed it and she accepted his apology. I mean, it's so refreshing to see that. <sighs> Thank God. It's just nice. It's really nice to see somebody actually own up to responsibilities. Thank God. Uh, now, that has been the Wrestling Newsroom. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give this video a like. Please support me on Patreon. Link in the description below. Subscribe to more content. And I'll catch you later.